All right, well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first of the museum's new collaborative program series, Charlotte Street Artist Virtual Walk. I'm Krishan McKinney, Manager for Audience Engagement here at the museum, and I'm joined by my collaborative programming partner, Christine Boutros, who's the Grants and Awards Program Manager at Charlotte Street, along with our other Charlotte Street colleagues, Hope Benson, Marketing and Outreach Manager. Go ahead and give a wave, Hope. Christine, thank you for waving. And then we also have Amy Kligman, who's the Executive and Artistic Director at Charlotte Street. And then we also have our Nelson Atkins colleague, Madison Zalapani, Director and Public Community Access Program. For tonight, we're honored to have Vietnamese American artist, AAPI advocate, and 2020's Generative Performing Artist Award Fellow, V Tran, as our inaugural presenter. We stand in support with our AAPI community as there are friends, our colleagues, neighbors, and family members. And it's so important that we give voice to our KC artists and acknowledge their talents and contributions that make this city great. But before I begin, just a few housekeeping rules for you. Hope, next slide, please. Great. So you'll see that there are different views uh, that you can engage with for Zoom. We have speaker view, gallery view, and then captioning is also available and enabled. So feel free to turn on the live captioning by clicking the CC button at the bottom of your screen. Hope, oh, next slide. Christine will be managing our Q&A session. And just a reminder when submitting your questions, please select the Q&A option, not the chat. We're looking forward to an engaging conversation with you and V. And as this is a safe place for dialogue, please be mindful and respectful of all our guests when commenting or submitting your questions. Hope, next slide, please. And now I'm going to turn it over to Christine who will introduce Amy Kliegman. Thanks, Krishan. Thanks for having us uh, with you tonight for this program. It's been such a great pleasure working with the Nelson Atkins to put this together and with V, of course. So I'd like to introduce Amy Kligman, our Executive Artistic Director for the Charlotte Street Foundation, who's going to share um, a few words about Charlotte Street and uh, the Artist Walks. Hi everyone, thanks Krishan and thanks Christine. Um, I'm Amy Kligman, as uh, Christine said, and um, Charlotte Street Foundation envisions Kansas City as an exciting home for a multidisciplinary community of contemporary artists. Our mission is to catalyze and nurture this environment for forward thinking contemporary artists of all disciplines and career stages, and to energize the city by making it an amazing place for these artists to live and work. Our programs include providing free studio spaces to artists, operating over 100 free events out of our new campus at 3333 Wyoming in Midtown, Kansas City, and grants and artists to fund artists' work. Our longest running program, the Visual Artist Award, was started in 1997. Since that time, Charlotte Street has supported over 125 outstanding artists living in the Kansas City area through annual unrestricted cash awards distributed directly to artists and um, through these awards, uh, both the Visual Artist Award and the Generative Performing Artists Award. Currently five awards of $10,000 each are awarded annually, three to visual artists and two to performing artists. Over the years, we've granted over a million dollars directly to local artists in the community via these awards. From 2011 to 2015, Charlotte Street Artist Awardees were invited to lead individual walking tours at the Nelson Atkins, highlighting three to four collection pieces that were meaningful to them, followed by a presentation of each artist's work. This 2021 reboot of the program in a virtual format features all five of the Charlotte Street Award winners who were granted funds in 2020. In today's program, we're thrilled to introduce to you B. Tran. As a storyteller, actor, singer, songwriter, composer, and playwright, 
Tran examines topics as varied as the unpacking of inherited cultural trauma amongst refugee popula populations living in diaspora to the dismantling of the toxic masculinity within the mythos of the Hemingway hero. Using potent and empathetic storytelling about difficult subject matter, but with the accessible and plain spoken straightforwardness of his Southwestern Kansas roots, Tran's work presents a path to healing, hope, and unity in an ever divided society. So thanks everyone for being here. And now let's hear from me. Hi everyone. So lovely to see you. Christine, you've got the video. Hi, my name is V Tran. I was born in the shadow of Saigon, Vietnam and raised in the cattle country of Southwestern Kansas. I'm a preacher's kid and the son of butchers. I like to think that I'm equal parts sea salt, and I'm a generative performing artist. Now, I don't identify as just a musician or a songwriter or an actor or a playwright. Um, I kind of identify as an architect. I like to build blueprints for things, uh, but instead of buildings, I like to build stories, you know, and sometimes those stories can be the uh, form of a song, the form of a poem, the form of a play. Um, and I am not a visual artist, but because I love stories and storytelling and collecting stories, um, I love the storytelling in visual art. Um, and some of my favorite pieces at the Nelson spark in me the stories that they're telling and inform the way that I tell stories. So today, we're gonna have a conversation between some of my favorite pieces at the Nelson Atkins and the interplay that they have had uh, with my own work and with my process. So the first piece I wanna talk about today is Monet's Water Lilies. Beloved, beloved, piece that we all know uh, and appreciate, um, and a topic and story that Monet revisited so many times throughout his life. Um, and we're so blessed in Kansas City to, to have water lilies here so that we can enjoy and appreciate it. And far before I ever got to see uh, one of Monet's water lilies in person, uh, I was inspired by by just knowledge of the existence of that body of work. Uh, and I wrote a song called Water Lily, um, inspired by the techniques that I saw and the process I saw in Impressionism, you know, the, the brushstroke technique and how, how each brushstroke is so intentional. You know, whether it is a broad brushstroke or a precise, you know, uh, minute little, little uh, dip here and there. And for me as, as a singer songwriter, uh, I heard music when I looked at water lilies. You know, I heard music when I saw those brush strokes on that canvas. And so when you listen to my song, Water Lily, you can hear that. Now, here at the opening, we can hear that color wash. Uh, we can hear in the strings and, and the expanse there uh, a wash of color. Uh, I think of green uh, and blue, you know, lush, uh, verdant, uh, oceanic, uh, just like the way that I feel when I look at one of the water lilies that Monet painted. And then when we examine deeper what's going on on that canvas, the little minute uh, brushes, uh, the little minute leaves, the little minute petals. Uh, that's so kinetic to me, and that's so specific to me. Uh, and that inspires in me, even though I'm just a, a clumsy guitar player and singer, um, it inspired in me a symphonic sound for this song. You know, and, and you'll hear that in the elements that we chose uh, as a band to compose this work. You know, uh, you can hear it in, in the strings. Sometimes uh, the strings uh, are, are more legato. Sometimes the strings um, are very staccato. You know, and those are different brushstrokes, right? Just like you see on the canvas here. Um, 
You know, we see this, this B section in the bridge of the song, and you're seeing, like, petal work, petal work, flower, lily pad, leaf, you know. Um, that's the way that this piece inspired in me this piece of music that I wrote um, and that our band performed together and recorded together. Um, every single element, whether it's uh, my vocals or, or the bass work or the lovely string section um, or the, the background vocals or the trumpet that comes in there at the end for the solo, um, those are different colors, those are different brush strokes, um, and it's, it's just an exciting interplay to be inspired by another medium that I'm not a practitioner of. So, Rothko Untitled 11. Now, I love the color field body of work that Rothko's done and other artists have done. Um, there's something so visceral to, to just the, the impact that color symbology has. Um, and the Rothko Untitled 11 that's at the Nelson Atkins is one that isn't as vibrant or bold uh, as like, you know, a red color field or a yellow color field. Um, it's mostly black and very, very, very dark brown. Um, and it made me curious about our relationship with color and color symbology, you know, because at different times in my life, when I look at this piece, you know, I think about the unconscious biases that I may have uh, with color, you know, uh, because this is a black color field, right? And so something that, that we grow up with is thinking about you know, the purity of white, the purity of the, the blank page, the purity of the blank canvas, you know? And when you look at this painting, you may think, oh, the void and darkness and, and a looming sense of dread. But at some point, I kind of reframed it in my mind, especially because, uh, you know, I became a theatrical artist. Um, in addition to being a songwriter and, and just a writer writer and I'm, and I looked at it uh, from a different perspective to kind of break that binary uh, thinking because what is color but a spectrum right um, and rather than thinking of it as the void I think of it as the negative space that is the mother of all creation the negative space as a theatrical artist or as a, a cinematic artist um, you start with. Because as a writer or as a painter, you start with the blank white page. But as a theatrical artist or a filmmaker, you start in darkness, then you go lights up, then you fade to black, right? And so instead of seeing uh, Untitled 11 as a representation of dread or the void, I see it as opportunity. I see it as, as the negative space which begs to be filled with a story. And so then, as a theatrical artist and as a storyteller, that excites me. And then I start thinking, well, what do I want to fill that negative space with? You know, this is opportunity. Um, what story do I want to tell? And whose story is it? Who do I want to center in this story? Um, and in a, a demonstration of this, um, while not directly uh, inspired by Untitled 11, it kind of demonstrates uh, the, the point and the conversation that I'm trying to have here is, is uh, the title song from the folk musical memoir that I wrote about my family's escape from Vietnam and how my mother, my father, my sister and I came to this country with the clothes on our backs and $20 that a missionary gave to us and we built from there, from a blank canvas, you know, from a dark blank canvas. Um, and in writing that, you want form to follow function. Whose story is this? Who am I centering? I could center V. Tran. I've got plenty of stories out there centering myself. But in this particular song, this is a story that centers my mother and my father and the sacrifices and the bravery that they had. You know? And so you'll see in, in this video of a live performance of The Butcher's Son, um, their American dream. You know, we start in almost total darkness. And then you'll see 
how we choose to fill that negative space and whose story is being told. That was great. Uh, wonderful. I hope everyone enjoyed getting a chance to see that uh, just uh, a wonderful behind the scenes of, of V and his, his creativity. And we lost out for just a second of there. Uh, so V, if there are things that you want to touch about the Rocco during the Q&A, you most certainly can. And uh, we'll go ahead and get ready to transition to that. Christine is going to be leading our Q&A. So uh, before I hand it over to you, Christine, all set for that? Uh, yes, yeah, we're all set. In fact, um, I haven't seen any questions coming in from our audience um, as of yet. So um, I would like to ask V then, um, you know, would you like to tell us more about how you built, um, you know, the music up with the Water Lilies? I really would you know, have enjoyed hearing that story. And I think that'd be really great to share with everyone. Sure, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Yeah, and don't be, uh, don't be shy. Um, uh, you can AMA, ask me anything uh, about the process, about the two pieces that I chose uh, or about my work in general. Um, and uh, yeah, about Water Lily, uh, as I said before, um, you know, especially with impressionism and 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 uh uh the brushwork there it feels so visceral to me right and so so like i said uh in the recording uh, i felt music i felt music and and so i actually have it here and i can give you all a listen to that opening where i talk about um where i talk about can you see my screen? Yeah, all right. So when I talk about at the beginning where, where when you start with the canvas and you're just putting on those, those base coats of paint, right? All the green and all the blue and whatever. And when the strings come in, just like so, there's that base coat, right? And I just wanted that real um, verdant, oceanic feel so it's very legato it's very patient you know and the guitar starts to come in and you're getting a little bit more movement right and so that's kind of just setting the stage just like a you know a a, a piece of visual art wait a little bit deeper So the vocal starts to tell the story. The vocals start to tell the story, but as um, as I explain later, you know, as you get into the more minute details, uh, there's going to be more movement. There's going to be more movement in the piece. So you've got a more uh, more of a dynamic sense of movement here. So where did I go wrong? How did I bring you through? And this is what I was speaking of when I talked about pedal work, pedal work. You. The little brush strokes, little brush strokes for the minute details. I commit up to you. And you hear that lovely trumpet creating that climax of the song. So when I look at um, a, a painting like uh, Water Lilies or any of the Water Lilies or any, anything that has such movement and dynamism, that's what I hear, you know? And when I wrote, uh, wrote that piece, it was very much inspired by, by that movement, that sense of, of, of movement. That was beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. I do have a question okay. here for you, V. Oh, good. I was like, surely we have questions now. <laughs> yes, I have a question here from uh, Stephanie Knapp. 
Are there any local Kansas City art uh, visual artists whose work has inspired you to write a song for your band like you were inspired by the Monet? Hmm. That's a good question. Right off the top of my head, I haven't been inspired by uh, any of my peers here in town, but I employ them a lot and collaborate with them a lot. I've had a lot of live painting um, during during shows. Uh, I've had several visual artists paint live uh, during our show. And in fact, you know, I've got a piece right here that um, it's by Von Schultz and it's Four Seasons. But my debut EP, Goodbye Summer, is this is summer from that series. This is uh, winter from that series. And so, and just off to the side here, I've got a lot, a lot of visual art from from my friends here in Kansas City that um, that I um, that I am indeed inspired by. But no specific song just yet. But thanks for planting the seed. Now, now. <laughs> Now I've, I've got more source material. I've got more ideas for inspiration. Um, we have another question from Lynn. Uh, can you tell us about any plays that you might have in progress? Plays that I have in progress. Mm -hmm. um, well, for most of, uh, most of you who, who are familiar with my work, uh, The Butcher's Son, which is my autobiographical uh, um, folk musical memoir about my family's escape from Vietnam, that's been my big baby. That's been my big, big baby. Um, and it's hard. It's hard to get new works developed. We've self-produced it twice. We've toured it to meatpacking and refugee towns. We took it to the Chicago Musical Theater Festival where it was nominated for eight awards and won uh, Most Promising Musical and Best Lead Performer. Um, and we were just right on the cusp, right on the cusp of getting that big uh, Union House debut. And that's kind of what you want. It, it, it's like the theater equivalent of getting signed to a major record label, you know, if you were a, uh, a musician, you know, or a rock band. That's how you get on the charts, right? Um, and so we had developed a lot of interest uh, and relationships, but it's hard. Uh, I understand uh, the, the ROI is really tough on, on a new work. And so we were just right on the cusp. And in fact, it was the the, the Charlotte Street um, Generative Performing Artist Award was was earmarked for that uh, for for helping me with that final push of flying out, having coffee, making those meetings, finding the right relationship with with a theater around the country or here in Kansas City to give that play its last little push, right? And um, and yes, I do have several other plays and an, an entire album's worth of music waiting to be recorded. And and the CSF uh, um, award was going to be seed money for all of that stuff. Um, and then, of course, the pandemic hit. Um, and those funds have turned into survival money. So <laughs> I had to really, really grieve that. I had to really, really grieve that. Um, for me, the Butcher Son in particular, it's my legacy piece. It's 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 my kiddo that took my family's broken English and attempts to transform it into something beautiful, so that that y'all might hear hear my family the way that I hear them, the way that I know them, um, and so that kiddo. Um, I, I have an immense uh, sense of stewardship over that story. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that that kiddo got into a good school, you know, and then it can go off and, and live its life. And then and then then I could tend to its younger brothers and sisters. Right. Um, and we were just right there. We were just right there because that 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 album that I'm talking about, the the un, uh, unreleased album was actually a song cycle um, uh, that um, I had in my back pocket since I recorded uh, the record that Water Lily is off of. Um, and it was an album uh, that I've already titled called Latitude. And all of the songs on that uh, song cycle are about a location and reconciliation. Um, 
and then the pandemic took away everything, right? And so the artist in me really, really had to, to grieve that had to grieve that. And so I had to sit with all of the different parts of myself, the artist, the business person, the human being. And, and, uh, and we all sat down in grief together. And uh, the conclusion we came to was, hey, you know, we were going to use this seed money to, to write and record an album called Latitude. But can that be for us? Can we show ourselves Latitude in this time? You know, can we show ourselves compassion and grace and know that that those songs, these stories that we have inside of us are not stillborn. What we need to focus on right now is surviving so that those stories can survive as well. Thanks so much for sharing that, V. Yeah. Um, I do have another question for you uh, from Jocelyn. Um, she says, hey, V. I'm curious if you're always translating the visual world around you into sound and theater, or if it's usually visual art that gets you there. Does it feel like improvisation? Do you have rules about how colors or textures translate into sound that are always true for you? Uh, I don't. I don't have a hard and fast rule. Uh, and I. it's all a toolkit, right? It's all a toolkit and you just pull whichever tools are necessary um, in any given moment. Uh, I use a lot from storytelling. Uh, I use a lot from acting and directing, uh, just all of the different uh, learnings that I've acquired. Uh, and that's why in the video I say I don't self-identify as any of the mediums or disciplines that I practice. I identify as an architect um, because I just have that curiosity of How's this blueprint work? How does uh, how do I reverse engineer this? You know, how was that built? How was that made? Um, and that's kind of how I, I I work through a process. And I have found that uh, particularly if you get stuck, um, it's good it's good to kind of hack your brain by using something outside of the discipline you're currently working in. Um, uh, for anyone who has worked with me on on a project management basis, uh, producing a show or anything like that, um, you'll uh, you'll see that I, I go to cooking a lot, right? I'll say, hey, so we're building a program for this convention. You know, how do we set this program? How do we choose the speakers, et cetera, et cetera? You know, well, uh, there are things that are outside our locus of control, like people's availability or whether or not, you know, it's within our budget to have a certain speaker. And so I use the analogy of a meal. It's like, hey, we get to cook the meal. We're the chefs, right? So what do we want to present to our audience? You know, we, we want uh, an amuse-bouche. We want uh, a protein. We want some starches, some carbs, you know, and we want a dessert, right? And so now let's silo everybody out. You know, who are our speakers who are starches? Who are our speakers who are proteins, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same thing with band leading, you know, because I know I can't pay the mortgage for all of the musicians that are in my stable, but I know that I need a lead guitarist, I need a bassist, I need a drummer, et cetera, et cetera. And so I kind of just like, those are the different parts of the meal. Um, and it's the same thing with, with storytelling as well. And so just using different concepts from different walks of life and lived experience to, to get you unstuck, uh, I have found to be a very, very uh, helpful process. Well, thank you. Um, do we have time for one more question, Krishan? Uh, we do. We are right at seven, though. Um, but absolutely, we can take one more correct question if everyone can just continue to listen and enjoy this discussion with V. Sure. Okay, so we do have an, another question here. How do you think your experience over the last year during the pandemic will influence, influence your future work? Absolutely. Um, well, I've already kind of started it. Uh, it's the, the writing of The Butcher's Son really lit in me a desire to examine the trauma that that I carry, the inherited trauma, uh, the intergenerational trauma, the inherited PTSD, um, and also about wellness uh, and scarcity and, and inequality. Um, 
particularly as artists, we we live in an environment of scarcity. And when when human beings are in scarcity, we're not our best selves, right? Uh, because we're constantly striving uh, and armored up to try to survive. Um, and so what I've been working on in, in this pandemic time is a lot of uh, self-examination uh, and also um, and also taking what I know about storytelling and about um, <laughs> mental health and wellness as well um, and kind of merging uh what i've uh, i've discovered and learned and so i've actually started uh teaching workshops on wellness through storytelling and using uh the the mono myths and heroes journey that we all share together to kind of uh, ignite or or reactivate that sense of empathy that we have uh i always say that the work that i want to create um uses the aesthetic force of the empathetic power of storytelling. And so now I'm, I'm also examining how we can use it to heal ourselves, to examine the different parts of ourselves and, and, and be able to see with fresh eyes um, that six-year-old refugee kid and remember he's still here. He's still in me, you know? Uh, he's in this body, and and when when I'm in scarcity, he's he's in grief, and he's trying to say hello, and he's trying to communicate with me. Or uh, when Mama Tran wouldn't let me go trick or treating as a kid, it was because she was only two or three years removed from from us being captured by uh, the Khmer Rouge and put in a prison camp. You know, and my survival and our survival was so hard fought um, and so precariously won that that she was trying to pr uh, protect me. But seven year old V didn't understand that. Seven year old V was like, why is my mom so unreasonable? And so now realizing that and examining that and unpacking that and being able to have those conversations, creating a, a shared vocabulary. Now, now my mother and I can have these conversations and meet each other again for the first time. Um, and that's kind of where I feel my, my work is moving towards uh, with the songs on latitude. Uh, it's about reconciliation. With, with my wellness through storytelling work, it's about reconciliation, about discovering and creating a new language for ourselves to communicate with each other and with ourselves so that we can give ourselves what all of us need right now, which is compassion and grace um, and restoration and healing. Thank you. Thank you so much, V. Um, and I have to um, I agree very much with Gina Kaufman with her comment in the chat, uh, just an appreciation of your honesty and bravery in saying all of this. Um, I just want to share that's what Gina said, that um, I agree with her completely. And um, so I guess on that note, are there any final words before we leave tonight? Um, I just want to say thank you uh, to Charlotte Street Foundation and the Nelson Atkins Museum and everyone who tuned in tonight uh, to spend a little bit of time with my favorite pieces at the Nelson and with some of my work and letting me share my thoughts and just be be kind to one another uh, be good to yourselves out there um, hang in there um, and we'll uh, see each other through all of this wonderful B thank you so much uh, this has just been a wonderful wonderful time it's amazing how much content uh, has been shared just within uh, 30 minutes so we really appreciate uh having your voice and perspective uh be present uh be active and we want to value and appreciate that acknowledge that and then i certainly want to acknowledge our audience who joined us for this kickoff event series thank you all so much v feel free to put any of your links that you'd like to share uh, with our attendees in the chat. And then Hope, if you can go ahead and share the uh, ticket link 
uh, because everyone, we certainly want you to join us for next month's uh, virtual artist walk, where we'll be featuring 2020 Visual Artist Award fellow Kathy Lau. So that will be May 5th. And on that note, thank you all, everyone, and good night. Thank you, Krishan. Thank you so much, V. It was such a pleasure. Thank you.